Hello, Aquarius. <sighs> I am finding my words and I am finding my voice for October for Aquarians because it has a really different flavor than everybody else. Um, you fit into the collective in the sense that there's a lot of clarity and truth seeking in this month. Libra energy is very connective and communicative being that air sign, that relational air sign. And then a lot of energy is pouring into Scorpio during this month. And Scorpio is a truth seeker. Uh, Scorpio energy and when planets are in Scorpio, we are not trying to look for the fluff or the cover story. We are getting down to the bones of something. And Scorpio being a fellow fixed sign like you, Aquarius, squares you and, and challenges you and opens you up. And the thing that I noticed with your energy and the way that it's hitting you specifically and the way that all the transits are kind of working together is that they want you to find your voice in a new way. They want you to find the words, the the connectivity between your internal world and the external world. And so these energies are going to be asking that of you and, and inviting that in and inviting that adventure in finding a way to express something that's lodged almost physically in your body. And as I've been talking, actually, my, my throat chakra is getting tight. Like my throat feels tight talking to you guys today, which I find really interesting. It's like finding that voice. But I think these energies are actually going to, if you've been struggling with how to share of an idea or how to share of yourself and your mission in the world or on any level, it could be sharing something emotional with another person or it can be about that project that means so much to you whatever it is that's coming up for you that's been coming up that's felt lodged physically in your body that has had a hard time coming out this month is actually quite supportive of you finding ways to release that and open that so first we have Pluto going direct in your 12th house. So Pluto has been retrograde since April in your 12th house in that spiritual hidden realm. And Pluto does, Pluto retrogrades half the year every single year. And he's been hanging in, Pluto, in Capricorn for a long time, still has a ways to go in Capricorn. And so it's been working with you in getting into your spiritual house and figuring out ways to connect the dots. So Pluto has been retrograde integrating where we feel power, where we feel powerless, where we feel obsessive and trying to find ways to heal that. Now moving forward, you can take those lessons with you. We also have that energy starting to move into Scorpio. Once again, this is 10th house energy. So even though the sun is in Libra, a ninth house visionary energy for Aquarians and very supportive of you, very supportive of your big vision. Mercury and Venus are both going into Scorpio early on in the month. Mars is actually going into Libra as well. So Mars in Libra is going to be very, you're going to feel a lot of motivation to get things done and to push for it and to try something, try something new every day, right? Try new ways every day, shaking things up a little bit. Um, but as this move, this energy starts to move into Scorpio and Mercury is beginning the pre-shadow phase before the retrograde that will be happening in Scorpio most of November. October, we have the pre-shadow phase. A lot of truth coming up to the surface. We're really like getting things clarified here this month. We have a full moon in Aries in your third house of communication on the 13th. And this is where you may find a big breakthrough come in for you. Seven of Cups. If that's Pluto going direct in your 12th house, I don't know what is. If that's not, then I don't know what is. I love a good seven of cups though. We got to go up there and we got to, we got to get comfortable with seven of cups energy if we want to live life on this physical plane. Um, because we fight against seven of cups and that's why that card has such a bad reputation. Three of cups, because it's like, if we're uncomfortable with seven of cups, we'll numb it with um, alcohol or other substances or or we will distract ourselves with being social or there's a lot of ways you can avoid seven of cups energy in an uncomfortable way that ends up kind of doing a disservice to your process but seven of cups when we calm down enough to listen in is going to give us 
the magic ingredients we need to move through this world in a meaningful way. And you are going to be asked to keep going back to that uncomfortable place that maybe you've been avoiding for a little bit over and over again this month. Not because it's time to be tortured and like have to sit in your house and like torture yourself because it's time to connect that dot. The lovers. It's time to connect these pieces and move with that wholeness again. Something's felt a little fractured maybe for the last few months. A little bit like pieces of yourself couldn't be in dialogue. They couldn't quite reach each other. They couldn't quite have a conversation. Nine of Wands popped out. And this month is going to create those bridges, create those literally neural networks, but also emotive, energetic connections that are allowing you to move a little bit more in authenticity with whatever it is that's been lodged in your body. Eight of Cups wanted to come out, and so did three other cards. Four of Pentacles, the Devil, and the Five of Pentacles. Oh my gosh, these cards have been so popular. And actually, the bottom of the deck, once that whole craziness happened, was Knight of Cups. Okay, these cards have been coming out for a lot of signs, not for all of them, but I'd say three or four of you all have been getting these <laughs> resistance cards with worthiness. And like I said, um, October is a truth seeking month. It wants to get the pieces moving. It wants to get the truth out. It wants to get things connected and it wants to get things moving in an authentic fashion. So that means anything that's been suppressed or pushed down is kind of coming up. And what we're doing is we are sitting with those pain points and giving them a moment to breathe so that we can move forward in life. Because it's not about trying to avoid our pain points. It's not about indulging them and lounging around and being indulgent about our pain. It's about the, the world of the positive affirmations. It's great. It's a great tool set. Don't get me wrong. I love a good positive affirmation. However, positivity is also in being kind and nurturing to the parts of ourselves that don't feel worthy or feel scared or feel scattered or feel divorced or feel misunderstood and having time to give to those parts of ourselves. It's like yelling at a kid who's three who's having a tough day and is wanting to just cry and curl up in a corner. Would you just be like, get out of here. Just, you're, you're getting in the way of my positivity. You would go and you would hold that child. And in holding that child, there would be healing. And it's the same thing with these parts of yourself. So that's part of what's kind of getting dredged up with all this Scorpio energy. And that's just what Scorpio is good for doing. And once again, being a, a fellow fixed sign, it's either, you know, for all the other fixed signs, we all get a hit. I'm a Leo. So I also have a square with Scorpio. So we're getting challenged and here for you, it's challenging you on who you want to be in this world and how you want to show up to the table. Um, the end of the month, sun goes into Scorpio on the 23rd, new moon in Scorpio on the 27th, and Mercury goes retrograde in Scorpio on the 31st. So you better believe that this energy just keeps amplifying as the month progresses. Now we are going on a bit of a journey through the Aquarian heart today. And <laughs> that's, you know, kind of what I love to do, right? Let's see if I can hold it together because I will probably cry when I think about you, you all and your journeys. You know how much I love you. Uh, because, yeah, this is a huge journey. I'll just tell you right now, this is a huge journey to unlock something. This is almost a month where I just have this vision of this key going into a lock and unlocking it and opening it up. So we start with these cups energies. Now, water energy is really interesting because when it's working with you, water magic wants to take you to the formlessness, to the, the primordial soup, the emotive soup, right? And in this case, this energy wants to take you up and out to reassess how you're connecting with others and how you're finding your voice. Just taking a deep breath with this energy because there's a lot going on here, you all. And this unlocking is really important. It's just going to be fantastic for you. But it's a big journey. It's a tra you're traveling. You are traveling. It you're going on a journey. Okay. So Seven of Cups, like I said, is a very good energy to get comfortable with because it's where we do 
our most emotively connective work. It's where we go to sit with our discomfort, with the parts of ourselves that maybe we do not want to have to look at. However, that's helping you connect more deeply with others. Your vulnerability here is really big. If there's somebody that, if you have a friend or somebody that you can talk to about this stuff, that would be fantastic because you'll find that the ideas start to flow and that throat chakra starts to open up. Because here's the thing, we have the lovers here as well. So we have three of cups and we have the lovers. Now these are very connective, loving energies. They're very passionate. They want there to be bridges being connected between you and other people. Not for you to be an isolated agent or to feel that you are disconnected, but to feel really connected, really social, really loved, really seen. And for some of you, this does have to do with partnership. A lot of you, this also just has to do with you, as an abstracted individual, being able to reconnect with the world in a way that's meaningful for you. Either way, that's really going to be the goal. Now, here's the thing. You have some really, something really big to, to, to make peace with in yourself so that you can be connected and so that you can't and you don't have to do this alone that's why there's these, these connective cards three of cups and the lovers because all of the next five cards nine of wands eight of cups four of pentacles the devil and the five of pentacles have everything to do with feeling locked up and needing to move this energy needing to get this energy moving, scrambled, shaken up, released. And this is actually a theme that came up for Scorpios as well, but it's even stronger for Aquarians as I'm sitting here now. So this came with the Scorpio readings. So if you have Scorpio on your chart, you're going to notice this is happening extra probably. But um, our bodies quite literally need movement in order to release things that have blocked us. That heaviness here and here, is something that physically needs to be released. It has to do with where you have protected in the past, where you've needed to put up shielding, which is fine. Once again, the Nine of Wands, the World Weary Warrior, as I call him, that's my nickname for this card, this guy doesn't need somebody to just tell him positive things. He needs somebody to literally physically hold him and make him feel safe so that he can drop this last guard post in a war that is over. He needs that nurturing, that holding in order to feel okay. And you have this traveling energy. Eight of Cups is about grieving and releasing and going on your adventure and feeling the movement. And so you can see this is a landlocked energy and this is a moving energy. And there's this thing going on here with you traveling across a river into the next form of yourself. Now that landlockedness is really strong with the Four of Pentacles, Devil, and Five of Pentacles. I mean, but these are internal struggles. These are internal struggles. These have to do with our feel when we feel imprisoned, either by material circumstances. A lot of times with material circumstances we'll have in our head, we don't have enough resources to move forward. Or maybe you feel trapped. I'm trapped in this job. I'm trapped in this relationship. I'm trapped in this house. I can't move. A lot of times when you listen to meditation teachers and people who do the work of loving kindness meditation, they talk about that a big part of what meditation does and why it is effective, one of the many reasons, is that it creates a feeling of spaciousness. That we can luxuriate and breathe in the spaciousness, right? Because when we have anxiety, when we have panic attacks, when we have times where there's too much information coming in at us, and I, Aquarians, I know this happens to you a lot. You put on a bold face in order to handle it, but the world is a lot for you to handle, and it can make you feel very cramped, like these cards show, right? Like you are trapped. And I'm getting like full body shivers as I'm talking about this. This is really a strong power. I had no idea this was coming. I didn't know completely how powerful this was going to be till I started to bring this message in. And this month, like I said, it because it brings up the truth, it's like you have to confront this. 
not confront this. You need to hold this and hug this part of yourself that feels like it is stuck and it is not allowed to break into this next thing. You need to hold yourself in that. It's beautiful to write to this version of yourself, to write to these aspects of yourself that are like that kid that is stressed out, that is overwhelmed, that just needs to be held. Not to be pushed away or ignored, but to be held. And it may seem as though you're going down into the labyrinth where you're never going to come back out again and like maybe in choosing this, life isn't going to be happening for you. However, it's actually the the opposite. If you let yourself surrender into this feeling of landlockedness and into this, into this part of yourself that maybe feels like there's not space to breathe or maybe that you will find a great dialogue there and it will unlock that voice that needs to move, that energy that needs to move, and it will benefit any relationships you have right now that are needing some extra attention. Now, what's really interesting is the Knight of Cups was the final card that came out after all of these really kind of profound, intensive energies. I mean, quite honestly, these are like, we're, we're getting to the bones of something big, Aquarians, because the Knight of Cups is about truth, love, and beauty. You know, he is the most romantic of the knights. He really believes in that love story. He really believes in the magic of moving through the world with that full cup and opening it up poetry and flowers and beautiful things. You know, this is a heart-based energy of love and giving and openness. What a different feeling that night has compared to this, right? What happens there? What is happening here with this alchemical process? That you sit with this part of you that just feels a little bit like it's not allowed, like it's overwhelmed, like it's trapped, like it's stuck. And in sitting with it, it opens up everything you wanted. It opens up an entire new pathway that you didn't even know was there. And suddenly it's presented to you. That is so powerful. I'm going to pull a final card from my Cosmic Tarot. Because you may be finding you're needing to shake loose the concrete around a part of your life or a part of your physical body, not even kidding, physical body, dance, movement of any kind, any kind of movement is going to be extremely important. Let it move through your body. Queen of Wands. Your oppositional sign of Leo. Boldness. Focus intent, owning your identity, owning your path in life. That is what the Queen of Wands represents. She represents a trailblazer and somebody who really it, it feels her value and her ability to move through the world. Maybe you'll have a Leo come in who helps guide this. Maybe you embody that mirror image energy. Maybe you step into that fire energy. Queen of Wands is very powerful. This is a month where while we have all these cards about feeling maybe trapped or heavy or held, you're not trapped or heavy or held. Even in just saying, yeah, I feel that, you're free. Your freedom is guaranteed in these energies. They do take you to a heavy place, but often I find that when we have the resistance, when we have the close, and it's because something is coming to a head. We are getting infusions of what we wanted. A lot of times, manifestations, experiences as they happen in the world with other people and in other situations are actually calls to us to open and break something open. They're actually, they're not always just these things of, oh, it's easy now because it's, because it's done, it's manifested. It's like the manifestation then is an invitation for you to break something open. And in your case, it's more about the unlocking, not about the smashing the wall down and trying to destroy the wall in one day. 
That's not sustainable, but about the unlocking. You need to be held. You need to be loved. You deserve to be held. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to feel this level of empowerment. So the situations, the conversations that are going to come up in your life this month are going to call you to be held, be seen, unlock, and be truthful in your journey with yourself. And that is going to open up your voice to be heard and shared with those in the world that need to hear your voice and for you to have those deep connective relationships, to have that healing and to have that growth. So I do actually feel that this month is very supportive of you, but you may be noticing that you do feel that you are having to learn new skill sets and be challenged in these ways and that you are hitting up against that part of yourself that needs to be held and loved that much more deeply, not to be suppressed or ignored. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that because I think that's such a beautiful message and I'm really excited for Aquarians. I am with you on this journey. I love you so much as you move through this energy. I started my Patreon and I'm really excited. I'm going to be adding new content every week, including weekly astrology write-ups so that you get a sense of what the energies are doing and how to work with them. I'm going to be doing a video on Pluto Direct and Capricorn. I'm going to be doing a video on Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. There's going to be new content every week. I also plan on doing a lot more about my personal journey behind the scenes and how I've dealt with those things and um, just big check-ins with everybody. So this is going to be a great way to connect with me. You'll have access to all of these extras that come out every week. Um, and so I'm really excited to share that with you. And it's a really great way to help me out as well. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at Sarah Verba. And I may still have a few sessions left in my 2019 calendar, which is open, but it's pretty full. So if you're looking for a one-on-one -on -one reading, I would highly recommend popping on my calendar now and grabbing one of those last spots. The whole process is really easy. I'll leave all of those links in the description box below. So if you just click show more, you'll see it all there. I'm also, of course, wearing my besties pink loons jewelry. Um, she's always got something new in her shop, so I'll leave her Etsy link below as well. I love you all so much. I believe in you, and I think this month is going to be quite, quite magical. You guys got some of the most magical energy of anybody. I will see you in November for more becoming.